Hey internet, it's Beyondre. Yes, I'm a real person, not just a disembodied voice behind some still pictures. I started doing some UFL videos and I'm back with another one, this time taking a look at four rules that are a little bit different between the XFL and the USFL and which rules they should actually implement for the 2024 season. Let's start off with the kickoffs. The XFL kickoff rules are a little different from the NFL and USFL. Kickoffs happen from the team's own 30-yard line. The kicking team lines up at the opponent's 35-yard line while the receiving team lines up at their own 30. Players can't move until the ball is touched. In the USFL, the kickoff rules are similar to the NFL structure. However, in the USFL, they kick off from their own 20-yard line. This encourages kick returns as they had an 81% return rate in 2022, and they shot for a 90% return rate in 2023, although I could not find a definitive stat to confirm or deny whether they hit that 90% mark. This may not be a popular opinion, but I'm a big fan of the XFL kickoffs. I think the fact that both teams lining up five yards from each other and they don't get the chance to build up that head of steam like you see in the NFL or the USFL, it actually is more advantageous for player safety as opposed to moving the football back to the 20-yard line to encourage kickoff returns. But you still have the special teams on both sides going at full speed. And while they did say that injuries were down, Mike Pierre had said that, uh, in an interview, still the XFL model to me is the safer of the two options, and I hope they go with that. Moving on to probably my favorite rule, the extra point. The great thing about both the XFL and the USFL is that they both have tiered extra point systems, one, two, and three point, which means late in the game, if you're down nine, you're still in the game because you're only down one score. Let's take a look at how the XFL does their extra point conversions. XFL, there were no kicks. Runs and passes only. From the two yard line was one point. From the five yard line was two points. And from the 10 yard line, three points. The USFL was slightly different. A one point attempt was a kick on a ball snap from the 15 yard line. A run or pass play from the two yard line was two points. And a run and pass play from the 10 yard line was three points. I could see an argument for using the USFL rules for the extra points because it gives kickers extra opportunities, and that's what this league, the UFL, is all about, giving opportunities. Personally, though, I'm more of a fan of the 2-5-10 structure with no kicks. Um, it could go either way on this one. I'm going to actually go with the USFL on this one just because of the fact that it does give kickers more opportunities. But I actually would like to see the two-point conversion move from the two to the five-yard line. Moving on to our third rule, and this is probably one of the most exciting ones, the onside kick. The XFL had the traditional onside kick, but in the fourth quarter, they had a little twist. If you scored... You could choose to run a 4th and 15 play from your own 25-yard line. If successful, you got to keep the ball. If unsuccessful, the defense took over at the spot where the ball was downed. Like the XFL, the USFL had the NFL-style onside kick. However, the difference between the XFL and the USFL is the USFL had a 4th and 12 play from their own 33-yard line. If successful, the offense keeps the ball. If not, the defense takes over. Really, I think we're splitting hairs on this rule, and if you put too much thought in it, then you really probably need to get outside a little bit more. I'm going to lead with the USFL on this one, just because if the team going for that 4th and 12 opportunity from the 33-yard line converts, they're going to have a shorter field on most conversions than starting 4th and 15 from your own 25-yard line. So give the offense a little bit of advantage in USFL two rules to one. Finally, we're going to talk about something that the NFL can't seem to figure out, but both the XFL and USFL can, and that's overtime. Both the XFL and the USFL feature three attempt shootouts in overtime. The XFL starts from the five yard line where the USFL starts from the two. Two points per successful attempt, sudden death if tied after three attempt, and absolutely no ties. It's 
completely and utterly surprising that the National Football League can't seem to figure out that perhaps other leagues might have a better idea on how to handle overtime. I mean, even college has a better idea of how to handle overtime, and they can't even figure out how to figure out a true national champion. I think I'm going to go with the XFL for the overtime rules, and the reason is simply this. While it doesn't matter on the 4th and 12 or the 4th and 15 play so much, whether the ball starts at the 25 or the 33 yard line, when it comes down to this short field shootout, the difference between having the ball at the 2 yard line and the 5 yard line is huge. And if you're going into overtime, you want the winning team to earn it. So make them go back the extra 3 yards and go from the 5 yard line. Overtime goes to the XFL. So there you have it, final score XFL 2 with the kickoffs and overtime, and the USFL 2 with the extra point and the onside kick. Hey, you made it to the end of the video, I thank you for that. I'm not going to be one of these YouTubers that beg you to like and subscribe or leave a comment below. You've been on YouTube for years, you know how it works. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you don't like it, no skin off my nose. For those of you that did like it, I'm Beyond Dre, and I'll see you in the next video.